Friendships have a profound impact on our lives. So whether you are five or 50, the friends that you choose will affect your life. We can impact our children until the age of about 12 or 13. And after that, it is the friends that they choose, the environment that they have that will affect them. So we need to set the example about how to choose our friends by choosing the right people. We have to teach our children how to choose their friends wisely and we need to set the example by choosing our friend. I would like to ask you, what kind of a friend are you? Do you give of yourself with no strings attached or are you calculating to get the maximum out of each person? Do you forgive or make excuses for your friends or are you constantly seeking out their flaws? Are you there when they need you or are you there only for when they're having parties? Because when you are able to be there for a friend, when you are able to lessen a burden from someone, then Allah will lessen the burden that you have on the day of judgment. Do you protect your friends and stand up for them when others are talking about them? Or are you the first one to take part in the backbiting binge? Do you keep their secrets or are you the first to share everything that they have told you? We have to keep in mind that the secrets that our friends share with us are an amana and we have to safeguard these amanas. Do you encourage your friends to make advancements and to succeed in this dunya or the hereafter or are you somehow preventing them from moving ahead? Now I'd like to ask some questions about the kind of friends you have. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because this is going to impact your mood, it's going to affect your religion, and it's going to affect your dunya and the akhira. So I want to have you reflect on the kind of friends that you have. Do the friends that you have give you support and a peace of mind, or are they always draining you? Are they negative and they are just draining you of your energy? Do your friends live according to the Quran and Sunnah? Is that their primary goal? Or are they more concerned about keeping up with the latest fashions and fads? Do they remind you of the hereafter? Do they help you in making advancements in your deen? Or are they somehow distracting you and taking you away from the deen? Because ultimately your friends are either encouraging you and taking you towards Jannah or they're distracting you and taking you to the hellfire. And we have to be very cautious about the friends that we are choosing to spend our time with. Now I'm going to talk about some of the characteristics that are needed in order to be a good friend. The first thing is being there for them. And the way you can be there for them is to listen. Now listening is an art. It's an art that very few people have mastered. Many times when you're talking to someone, they are too busy thinking about a response or too busy or too consumed about themselves. So it's really important to learn how to actively listen. Actively listening means that as you're listening, you reiterate what you have heard from the person so that there's no miscommunication. Another thing that you can do by being there for them is anticipating their needs, realizing where they are and what they need before they even ask. We need to anticipate the needs of the people around us so that we can be there for them because it's really, really difficult for some people to crush their pride and to actually ask for help. Allah says in the Quran that Allah loves those who do good. And this is in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 134. So any kind of that you do, any kind of good act that you do for your friends, you are rewarded for it. Another way that we can help our friends is by visiting them, by keeping in touch with them. There's sometimes, there's some individuals that you will only hear from them when they need something. Have you had that experience? You never, you don't hear from them, but as soon as they need something, you get that phone call. Now, how nice is it if you can maintain this relationship and nurture it and nourish it and so that when you are in need or you want something that it's not something awkward that you keep this bond and this relationship now visiting them is very essential especially if they're sick and you go and you pay them a visit the prophet sallallahu said that a person who is visiting the sick, whether it's their friend or going to the hospital or whoever it is, that 70,000 angels 
pray for, for their forgiveness. How many of us need that? How many of us need that du'a for, from the angels that Allah forgives us? We're always erring. So if we can get into the habit of visiting our friends, then we get so much reward. The Prophet وسلم, said a story of a man who was on his way to visit a friend and Allah sent an angel to wait in his path. As the man passed by, the angel asked him, he's like, where are you going? And he said, I'm going to go visit my friend. And he asked him, are you going back to him because you gave him something and you need repayment? Do you need anything from him? And he said, no, no. And he said, why are you going to visit him? He said, I'm going because I love him for the sake of Allah. And at that point, the angel told him that I am a messenger and Allah has come to tell you that he loves you because you love him for the sake of Allah. So this is a reminder to us that anytime we're visiting a friend and we're doing it for the sake of Allah, Allah loves us because we're doing this. There's another hadith of the Prophet وسلم, that says that individuals who love each other for the sake of Allah, they will be rise on pillars of light. And the prophets and the martyrs will ask, who are these people? They will be envious of them. So imagine the prophets that we know looking up, seeing these people on pillars of light and wondering, who are they? And Allah says that these are individuals who loved each other simply for the sake of Allah. So we need to establish these kind of relationships and loving for the sake of Allah. In order to be a good friend, the second thing that you can do is to be loyal. There are so many people who have friendships and then they cut it off for the smallest things, for the silliest things. If there's a little misunderstanding or there's some kind of incident that happens, they're very quick to end the relationship. So we need to be loyal and feel that this relationship needs to be preserved. And if we have that mentality, our friendships will last for years and years. A way to be loyal is to never ever gossip about your friends. Have you noticed a friend that gossips about someone else and when they gossip, you can be pretty sure that they are going to sit and gossip about you. So try to build loyalty by not talking about your friends and not sharing their secrets because like I was saying that secrets are an amana. If you share your friend's secrets and tell others about it, it will really destroy the relationship because you will lose the trust of the individual. So make sure that you are being loyal by not gossiping about them and not sharing their secrets. Another way to be a good friend is to defend them. So if someone is, is talking about them, you talk about their good traits and you defend your, your friend. The Prophet Sallallahu said, that none of you truly believes until he wants for his brother what he wants for himself. And this is really something easy to say, but implementing it is challenging. Imagine yourself, you're at work and you have your Muslim brother or sister and they may get that promotion. Are you gonna be just as happy for them? And this is something that we have to work on our heart. We have to realize that, you know, Allah is our razak, right? He is the one who provides and He sustains us. So if your friend happens to get that job, well, that was his risk. Instead of getting upset, then you are happy for him. Another example is when a friend of yours gets married, are you going to be just as happy for them? Many times people have a hard time being happy or wanting the same khair and khair goodness for other people than they want for themselves. So we need to become aware of this. Another thing you can do is to forgive. When you forgive, you will establish better relationships because many times what happens is that people do make mistakes. They are falling into error. They may say things that hurt you. They may end up lying. They, many things may occur, but if you forgive, then you will find that you are mending. It's kind of like stitching the, uh, the relationship. The last thing you can do as far as having good relationship with your friends, if things go wrong and there is some kind of misunderstanding, the best thing is to try to resolve it. I've seen that it's very ubiquitous that people deny the problems, that you see someone acting differently towards you and you go up to them wanting to resolve it and saying, you know, is there something wrong? And many times the person will completely deny it and say, no, 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 I'm just busy. Or no, no, you're just imagining. And no one is, um, no one is really 
focused on resolving the problem. Maybe there's this fear of a bigger problem being created. So I think if we are mature in dealing with problem resolution, conflict resolution, that the person who is approaching that one is kind and gentle and inquiring to really preserve their relationship. And the person who is hearing this is wise and mature and feeling that, okay, this information, maybe if I share this thing that is bothering me about the person, we can resolve it and we can overcome it and have a better relationship. I think we really have to have this mentality because by denying the problem, it's not going to go away. It's just going to get, you know, it's just going to pile up. And many times this happens within marriages where a problem just goes on and on. A person is not sharing, is not resolving it, and the person is just denying, no, no, there's nothing wrong, no. Then why is it that you're not giving salams? Why are you acting differently? So why, what's, there's something going on there. And it's just best to share and express in a gentle, loving way so that the problem can be resolved. The Prophet ﷺ said that the doors of paradise are open Mondays and Thursdays and those individuals who did not associate anything with him will be forgiven except those who hold grudges against another Muslim brother or sister. So imagine and they will not be forgiven until they reconcile and he repeated that three times that until they reconcile they will not be forgiven until they reconcile they will not be forgiven so this is giving the importance of the brotherhood and sisterhood in Islam that we do not break these bonds of friendships so this is telling us how important it is to keep the bonds of friendship that we should do our best to maintain it even if something goes wrong Ask for forgiveness for hurting a person's feeling, even if you weren't wrong, even if you didn't do anything. I think it never hurts to apologize for making someone feel bad. I think especially when you have a, a close friend of yours and you have hurt them in some way, just find a way to win their heart back. Maybe give them a gift, maybe do something special for them, invite them for lunch, and do this in order to salvage your friendships rather than having broken friendships here and there because a lot of times what people do is that as soon as something goes wrong they just end it with this person and then they go to the next person and the next person and so they have a trail of broken friendships what we need to do is try to establish very strong bonds with every single person and make them last the prophet sallam also said that you should not Stop talking to a friend of yours for more than three days. You should not estrange them for more than three days. Because if this happens, then these friendships are falling apart. And if two people are meeting, the one who initiates the salams, the one who initiates being friends once again, that's the one who is the better of the two. So this is the way we need to be competing. We need to compete in, in pleasing Allah by showing forgiveness, by mending our friendships, and by keeping these bonds of sisterhood.